Welcome to the Kingdom Community. Many in the body of Christ long for authentic community and a spiritual family to belong to. We exist to connect, equip, and send you into the world to fulfill your destiny and advance the kingdom of God on the earth. To learn more about us, please visit kingdomcommunity.global. We look forward to hearing from you. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Power of Five podcast. Glenn Blakeney here. And today we are going to be talking about the role of the evangelist and the topic of evangelism as it relates to the fivefold ministry, fivefold offices and grace of Jesus Christ. Evangelism, of course, and the evangelist is a very critical part of what needs to happen in uh, the body of Christ for the expansion of God's kingdom. There's so many churches today that um, just really have not been effective in winning the loss to Jesus Christ. Well, my guest is Pastor Sheree Rice from Numa Church in Melbourne, Australia, and she serves in a critical role at Numa Church. And Pastor Sheree, welcome to the Power 5 podcast. Hey, Pastor Glenn, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this chat with you and um, excited because I'm here right now in Australia and Melbourne at Newman Church. And uh, just recently, Lynn and I have come on board with uh, a role in terms of, um, you know, the global kind of ambassadorship, seeing the kingdom of God move forward. And uh, we're very excited about that. And, and I'm not saying that to talk about me. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that because my time here um, at NUMA over the past month, really, I've just been really impacted by what's happening here. And uh, love your heart, your passion for the lost. And you serve on the global executive team at NUMA. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about your role and even how did you get on the team? Yeah, really good question. Um, it's funny, actually, because it's I came on at the same time that Pastor Corey did, well, maybe just a couple of weeks after. Um, Pastor Corey reached out to me in 2018 and said, hey, listen, I'm in transition and uh, looking to take on a it's an existing church. I have a real heart for fivefold and you have the gift and grace of evangelism. Would you pray and consider being a part of the team and, and coming on in this space of evangelism? And uh, and so that was that was the call to come and be a part of the team here at church. Um, funnily enough, I actually was born here in Melbourne and parents went to this church, were married in this church, and um, I was baby dedicated here in this church. So it feels like I've come full circle, but uh, 2018 was the official call that I had from Pastor Corey to come and be a part of team here. And uh, when he said it, something jumped inside of my spirit and I just knew um, that this was the God thing uh, in this season of my life. I too was in transition at the time. I just finished serving as an associate pastor in a church where I'd started out in ministry. And uh, when I felt the transition happening, I didn't know what was next. And I literally got off the plane in Sydney, Australia, uh, after being in, in America for seven weeks and uh, and picked up the phone call um, voice message from Pastor Corey. And needless to say, I was very excited uh, about what he had to say and what he had to share. Yeah, absolutely. An amazing church. Um, what's happening here is extraordinary. And uh, yeah. there's really an amazing move of God. You know, we've been hearing about what's happening in America recently, but I, mm -hmm. I just want to say someone from the other side of the world, um, what's happening here in Numa, maybe not as well known for whatever reason, but I think it's exceptional and there's just a real move yeah. of God's spirit. So let's talk about that. Would you just yeah. unpack a bit, you know, what, what's actually happening here spiritually? How did it start? And yeah, what, what have you been seeing? Yeah, it's a, a beautiful uh, picture of of the heart of God um, being birthed in his people. Uh, we've been obviously hungering for the presence of God and really prioritizing uh, some of what we feel are our kingdom culture values in that prayer, you know, fuels power. And we actually went really hard after this in the first few years that we were here and obviously still are. 
um, but bringing God's people back to a place of prayer and seeing God's face. And uh, it is there is such a hunger in, in the people of God here um, for his presence. And, you know, it's always been a church of his presence. It's always been a church where in the church would go into times of prayer and fasting and, and the presence of God was just so tangible and thick uh, every time they gathered together after those moments. But it's like we went from doing event-styled pursuit of his presence to, to the pursuit of his presence on a daily basis and on the regular weekend. Um, and so there's been a real hunger birthing God's people here in Richmond, which we have seen as a result, you know, services blow out and, and and God move powerfully, the glory of God filling the house. We've seen signs, wonders and miracles taking place and uh, and God just being really present in our services. Wow. Yeah, so good. I can attest to that. That's for sure, you know, what we've been seeing uh, since we've just been here. Uh, it's powerful. It really is next level. And it's unique. Mm. It's not happening many places. But there seems to be a shift in the sense that many in the body of Christ, many leaders, pastors, fivefold ministers are really looking to step into this space in terms mm. of seeing the restoration of God's power in his church again. Um, Numa Church is different, not only in the sense of what's happening spiritually here, but it's extraordinary, in my opinion, because of the leadership structure. Um, mm. Not only that you believe in the fivefold, the ascension gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, but there's more to it than just affirming, recognizing, and saying, oh, yes, this person's, you know, an apostle or prophet or prophetic, apostolic, evangelistic, but um, the actual structure of Numa Church. Would you uh, just tell us about that? Yeah, look, it's... um. It's it's one thing that I think um, really stood out to me even when Pastor Corey contacted me and talked to me about it initially. Um, it was it was very much this stepping away from um, a CEO or C, CEO styled structured church where it was you know the pastor led the church and you had department leaders. Um, although we have those things, our whole structure of our church is not set up. Um, as with that as the as the structure and so when Corey talked about bringing the fivefold in um, it was it was really identifying those with the gift and grace of that of those um, of those five gifts and really um, bringing in an emphasis to those things and setting everything up to sit under um, that structure. And so we're a collective fivefold team. We work together at an executive level on global um, making decisions. But we, we do that from firstly the posture of prayer. We do that also from the posture of our gifts and graces. And we, we make decisions and we lead together as a collective team in that space. And then obviously that's outworked uh, through the local church. Um, and so what that looks like you know, is is alignment. So all of the generational ministries or departments, as you like to previously uh, have known or seen or experienced church, sit in under a pastoral grace. Um, all the outreach evangelistic spaces come and sit in under the pillar of evangelism. Um, you know, creative and productive all come, um, production all come in and sit in under the prophetic pillar um our teaching and and all of those aspects of content go through our teaching pillar so there's been a real shift and a change when we first came into the church um but it's 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 very different to anything i've ever been a part of yeah yeah ab absolutely so uh, you are the person who is the evangelist pillar in the sense mm. that you lead up all things evangelism, service and evangelist. What specifically are uh, some of the initiatives and your responsibilities and what you oversee and help uh, lead? Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, I think firstly it comes back to coming back to that passage of scripture from Ephesians chapter 4 where, it, you know, it says that he gave these gifts and graces that they'd equip the saints for the work of ministry. And so mm. the area of that I oversee is not so much about doing the work as much as it is about training and equipping every believer to be able to share Jesus co more confidently. And so what that looks like, you know, includes personal evangelism. It includes the corporate 
expression of evangelism. Um, it includes training teams in things like altar calls and new Christian teams and follow up of new believers and and water baptisms. Um, you know, teaching our numerous school of the spirit students. Um, you know what that looks like to Im- embody evangelism um, rather than it just being a topic that they study. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Now. You you mentioned something recently. I heard you share. We were talking about how just the whole idea of kind of the conventional thing: invite people to church. You know, we're going to have this mm-hmm. evangelistic, um, you know, message or or series, uh, whatever. And the pastor or the guest speaker is going to minister evangelistically. People get saved. Nothing wrong with that. But the approach under your mm-hmm. um, tutelage leadership here. And NUMA is more about uh, taking, equipping believers, as you said, sharing Jesus confidently to do it as a lifestyle and outside of the church. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. What what does that look like? Yeah, look, I think the the the, I guess the big overarching picture of it for me was watching a church or watching the church overcapitalize on invitational based evangelism where it is you bring them to church we'll get them saved and then you expect the church to disciple them and i think one of the challenges that comes with this is that it it disempowers the everyday believer to be able to lead people to jesus themselves um often you know i'll ask the question how many of you have led someone to the lord um in you know the last 12 months and you'll see a couple of scattered hands. Um, but, you know, if, if we, the church, were doing what we're called to do, and that is to make disciples, every believer should be able to share Jesus confidently and should be able to, um, you know, lead someone to faith and not be dependent on the church to do that. And so I'm not against invitational-based ministry. I think, you know, we need ministries that are outreaching to young people. We need ministries that are reaching out, um, you know, into into spaces and places that, you know, that you and I can't get to and putting on events and crusades and different things like that. But the reality is um, the church's decline is not due to the fact that, you know, the church isn't doing enough as in respect to the corporate church. It's the church as the body, as the people are actually not doing what they're called to do, which is to go and make disciples. Um, majority of our people I know um, and I've started to train to teach them on how to j- share Jesus confidently is one of the questions is, um, what, I, my friend wants to get saved. Now what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how to lead them in a salvation prayer. And so we've overcomplicated, I think, um, evangelism. I think we've overcomplicated sharing the good news of the gospel. I think we've overcomplicated bringing people to faith and we've put it into the basket of we'll just bring it to ch- bring them to church and the church can do the work. Right. Yeah, so good. And one of those things I've learned as studying the book of Acts is when we see in the first five chapters the early church was uh, growing, you know, significantly 3,000 out of the church, 2,000 out of the church, multitudes, Mm -hmm. both men and women added to the church. But then when we shift into the sixth chapter, there's this change in verbiage. It talks about disciples were multiplying. And uh, that really speaks to the involvement of every one of the believers, not just, you know, the apostles, obviously, in the book of Acts. And Mm -hmm. and you guys... um, under the the whole initiative of evangelism and equipping the saints here at NUMA, um, there's the NUMA School of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Students yep. are being equipped, and uh, the church itself is being equipped, not just Bible college students. Mm-hmm. What does that look like in terms of those events and and or that track or whatever it is? I mean, what does that look like to actually see these guys being equipped? Let's talk about the school of the spirit, first of all. Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, obviously it's, it's one thing to be taught what the Bible says about things, but it's another thing to be activated in those things. Uh, so, you know, we obviously are teaching the students within a context of a classroom setting, but then we're actually taking them onto the street in an activation uh, experience where they where they get to engage in four different areas, whether that's in schools, universities, street outreach, or whether that's in a community organisation that already exists that is doing the work of reaching people. And what we do is we empower our students to go out 
and to be able to take that which they've learned and practice those things. And I think we, you know, this is one of the challenges of living in society today is that we're so busy doing our life that we don't get to do life as Jesus did with his disciples. You know, when Jesus did life with his disciples, it was life on life. And when those students give up a year or two to engage in in life on life with Jesus and to be discipled uh, on an extensive level, they're stepping into spaces and places that they haven't or didn't think were even possible. Um, so we're, we're really excited about what's happening in that space, got students heading out uh, onto the street and into those places where they can have an influence in our society, where they can bring the good news of the gospel and be a demonstration of that. Okay, be a demonstration of that. Um, I like that. <laughs> and I know that sharing the gospel to you uh, is not just sharing it in word in terms of obviously we need to declare what scripture states about Jesus, God mm. raised him from the dead, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, all of that. But there's there's more to it in terms of what the students are being trained in, in not just how do you, you know, like, here's a script, go out and, you know, share this script. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, that's what's really important because I think what we've done is try to teach people a method and said, this is the one method that works. Whereas if you look at the life of Jesus throughout the Gospels and you see how he met with people, every single one of them was different. And so, you know, the Bible says, you know, be led by the Spirit and keep in step with the Spirit. And often we use that just as in respect to our own personal, you know, growth and development and, you know, holiness and righteousness and all those sorts of things. But I actually believe that it's a holistic picture that actually speaks to a greater measure of, of, of even keeping in step and being led by the Spirit when it comes to things like evangelism. And so, you know, we, we make sure that they have a clear understanding of the gospel because you need to understand what his story is to be able to then share that with somebody. So we, under, we have them understand that. And then we, we provide them with, with different means and ways that will suit their style or type of evangelism. So whether that's, you know, uh, you know, intellectual evangelism with, you know, um, apologetics, or whether that is relational evangelism or whether that is proclamation, like just straight up gospel speaking, preaching conversations with people. Yeah. Um, but we, we literally set it up in a way that that they have the um, the tools necessary, but the freedom and and the, the freedom to be able to express that. And, and what that looks like, and to be led by the Spirit in those moments. Right. And also when the students are involved in, in going out in the streets, for example, um, you know, there's supernatural ministry, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, we obviously take Jesus' word very seriously when he said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, you know, preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers. Like these, you know, this is it. it. That's what we are commissioned and, you know, empowered to be able to do. And he, he's given us authority to be able to do that. Matthew 28, um, 18 to 20, you know, I've, I have all authority, therefore go and make disciples. And I think when you understand who you are, whose you are, and the authority that you have been given and the access to the resources of the kingdom of heaven, when you hit those streets, you're empowered to be, a witness. You're empowered to to go with this good news and to carry that to anyone who'll listen. Right. So Gen mm. Z, we would say North America, Gen Z, Gen Z, whatever. You know, ultimately, mm. these guys are looking for something more than, you know, just showing up, just rocking up to church on a, a Sunday or a weekend. I mean, they're wanting to be activated and used. Mm. Uh, purpose. I mean, man, what an amazing journey it is to be able to actually be used by Jesus and to uh, demonstrate his kingdom. Um, yeah. What do you think? Can you just speak into that topic a little bit more in terms of where the church needs to go to really reap the harvest? Because prophetically, we believe the Lord is saying we're in a time of great harvest. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, you know, Gen Z is the first post-Christian generation or unreached generation, which may be true. Um, mm. But ultimately, what does it look like for the church to really engage the harvest today? Yeah. It's interesting because I think we've, 
we've taken Matthew 9, 35 to 37, where Jesus says, you know, to pray um, to the Lord of the harvest for laborers. And what we've done in church is we've made pray- praying for souls um, our priority. And we've started to pray, God, send us souls, give us souls. And we're just waiting for them to walk through the door. When actual fact, when you look at that passage of scripture, Jesus is literally, you know, come out of teaching on the mount and giving them, you know, teaching that astonishes them because of the authority that he taught with to then displaying that authority in Matthew chapter 8 and chapter 9. And he ends chapter 9 with, hey, um, disciples, I want you to pray to the Lord of the harvest for laborers. And when they do that, literally the next chapter, you jump the line, it says that he called them to himself and he gave them authority. And so literally they had prayed for themselves and then Jesus gave them authority. And he says to them, you know, go out and do these things. And I think what we've done is is we have settled in church um, with lifestyle messages. We've settled to, to preach about how to have a better life, how to have a better marriage, how to have better finances, you know, different topics that, that, are, that are all relevant and all in the word. But we've actually missed what it's actually all about. You know, we are here to advance the kingdom of God. We're here to make disciples and we're to train and equip people to do that. So what does it look like to train a congregation instead of giving them an ear tickling message on a Sunday that makes them feel good about their Monday to just go on with life and then check back into church on a Sunday? We actually need to equip them for their Monday. We need to be teaching them, you know, this is what your, your call is. This is how you walk that out. And and I'm, we, I strongly believe that we have a responsibility. When we stand before God, what did you do with the sheep that I gave to you? What did you do with the people that I gave to you? Did you train and equip them for the work of ministry or did you entertain them? Or did you tickle their ears with, with great stories that are all true but not necessarily advancing the kingdom of God? So I think we have a greater a greater mandate to call people to rise, to actually step into the fullness of the purpose that they were given power for. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. So good. Yeah. And to advance the kingdom, um, not just to build a local church, um, yep. to see lives transformed. Obviously, the things you mentioned, heal the sick, cast out demons, right? All of yep. that stuff is so important. Um Let's talk about the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I mean, Jesus obviously placed quite a premium on that when he said in Luke 24, 49 to wait in Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. In other words, don't go and preach yet. Uh, At Newman School of the Spirit, at Newman Church, what emphasis is placed on on the uh, believer being you know, connected to the power of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, you know, we can do nothing without power. And that power comes from an encounter. You know, so we have gone really hard and strong after the presence of God for the purposes of God and to know him face to face. And when you know him face to face, all you want is what he wants. And that what he wants is that all men would know him. And so you know, we have gone after the presence of God to seek his face, to experience his power, to be empowered to go out and be a demonstration to a world that so desperately needs it. So it's one thing to know something theologically or in intellectually, but it's another thing to walk in a demonstration of that. So what does it look like to be a Christian with the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you, flowing through you? What does that look like? And, and, and I feel we've, we've so often made the spiritual gifts about what that does and what, that ha- what happens in the life of the church, when in actual fact, when you look at the gifts of the Spirit in Jesus' life and how he outworked those things, they were all outside of the synagogue where those moments happened. They were all outside where the people were. And so I think, you know, um, unfortunately, we've, we've made seek the presence of God, seek the face of Jesus about an experience and about a, um, and not that it isn't, but it's not only about that. 
and it is for kingdom purpose. And so when we walk in the spirit, when we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit and baptized with fire, we literally go and set fire to other things and we carry all the things that he gives to us, the gifts of a spirit, and we walk in the fruit of a spirit. It's for a world out there that desperately needs it. Yeah. It's not so that we can look at one another and admire one another and be like, oh, look, you just, aren't you so patient? You are just displaying such patience. I mean, you're so, so Christian. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's actually that you would be like Christ to people who need Christ. That is what it's for. And so you can't do any of that without a power encounter. And if you do, you'll get exhausted, worn out, and burnt out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, Numa is so focused on uh, making sure that those who are doing the ministry, which would be obviously not just the ministers, the five ministers, the staff, but everyone, really has that encounter with God, those times of refreshing that come from the presence mm. of the Lord. And as you mentioned right in the very outset of the program, uh, prayer plays, you know, fuels power. Prayer fuels fire, power. It, it's actually one of the core values of Newman Church. Um, just want to, a couple of things. I, I want, obviously, people to be able to connect with you in terms of equipping, because there's so much need for the body of Christ to be equipped, to be able to share Jesus confidently. And I believe if we all got a hold of this, you know, as Obviously, we're not all called to be evangelists, prophets, apostles, mm -hmm. whatever, but we all have a responsibility in terms of uh, God using us prophetically at times, you know, all the gifts, uh, even even the revelation gifts and sharing Jesus. Now, I yeah. uh, want to talk about that because I know you have an amazing resource available. But just before we go there, one of the things that I think is so important for us to get right in this season is the actual fivefold working together in tandem rather than, mm. you know, just operating piecemeal as, as a silo, so to speak. Like yeah. we, we see that there are churches and ministries that, that affirm the, the fivefold. They may recognize, you know, those who are gifted in one of those areas or more, but to actually take that so that it's not just operating, everybody's kind of in their own lane, doing their own thing, but operating, you know, in, in a collaborative, cohesive way. Mm -hmm. um, how does that really benefit and complement rather than, you know, obviously compete? We don't want it to be about that. And yeah. from your experience, you know, how, how does that work where the fivefold actually comes together to collaborate and, and complement? Yeah, really good question. Um, for me personally, I look at the fivefold and go, well, Jesus was the full image of the, the fivefold. So he was all of the five in one. And so he never meant for those things to be silo, to be separate and to be isolated. Um, they were in him as one, but he brings everyone together as a body. And so, you know, I think um, personally, I think you, oh, I can't operate, I can't do what I do without, uh, you know, Pastor Corey and Pastor Sim and their global role of apostolic and what direction and vision they bring to the church and the releasing of those gifts and the fivefold. Um, I work really closely along all sides of these pillars um, in different areas and for different things. Um, if we were to just focus on one, we miss out on the full picture of who Jesus is. And so, you know, for us here, that looks like, um, you know, different projects that we've done in spaces together. There's collaboration, there's engagement, there's involvement, um, there's conversations that, that take place as, hey, I'm, I'm approaching this and, and I'm looking at it from this angle. What do you think about it? Hey, from the teaching pillar perspective, Dr. Mike, you know, here's something that I'm preaching on. Um, in this space, what do you think about that? Is there further, you know, information that you could you could bring to light on this? Um, we're we're constantly in relationship with one another, and 
you know, and that always has its tensions because everybody has their own grace. But we have to remember and recognize, no, no, when we're together, we bring the full picture of who Jesus is. And there's such a powerful dynamic that comes together when we um, are in that space where we're united in that. And each one of us around the table has that same perspective. Um, I think Pastor Stacey talks a lot about this in some of her prophetic stuff. But, you know, she had a vision from the very beginning about the oils being blended together and there being an aroma and a fragrance that comes from these things. And so I just honestly, from my own perspective in, in, in the area I'm in, I am so grateful for the fivefold. Um, I'm so grateful for the contribution of others who think, differently to how I think, who can engage with me in things at the level um, that they can and then vice versa, that I can do that for them. Right. Wow. Yeah, so good. And the multifaceted grace um, mm-hmm. of Christ, you know, the, the fivefold really represents the fullness, as you said, of Christ. When Jesus was on the earth, obviously he was an yeah. apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. He embodied all of those and manifested that. So, but uh, none of us individually is Christ or the body of Christ. We need each other to collaborate together. Um, that's the amazing thing about what's happening at NUMA is this collaboration and cohesiveness working together as a unit um, yeah. to advance the kingdom of God. And, you know, there's such a, a great vision to impact the nations, advance the kingdom church planting, mm-hmm. discipleship, evangelism, um, mm-hmm. you know, utilizing the prophetic to speak into that stuff, to to help bring guidance and revelation, yeah. you know, which ultimately even the apostolic forging strategies and, and the care mm-hmm. that's needed. Uh, and yeah. obviously you know, the sheep, the, the, the shepherd, the pastoral pillar, um, mm-hmm. the discipleship, the teaching that comes through uh, the teaching pillar, all so important. And uh, not one is more important than the other. But what I find interesting, Pastor Shuri, is um, many people that I know that, for example, have a heart for evangelism. I mean, they're amazing. I've, I've got so many good friends that are just amazing evangelists. They love to win people to Christ and and um, you know to train and equip others to do so as well. But typically, um, and this is just an observation, not to be critical, but typically all the evangelists kind of hang out together, and yeah. and then you know we see that in the prophetic and also in the apostolic. You know, I'm part of a network that's an apostolic network, and I'm always <laughs> advocating that. Yeah, I get it. We need to come together as as those who are apostolic, for example, to to learn from one another. But ultimately, we just can't stay in our holy huddle with all the uh, apostolics here and all the prophetics here. So Numa is clearly um, breaking that that uh, mold. And, and I love it mm. to see what's happening. It's so amazing. Um, but what you carry and your contribution, not only personally leading people to Christ as an evangelist, but equipping the saints, which really defines the the role of someone who's an evangelist versus someone who's just evangelistic is the whole yep. equipping part, right? Um, yep. So let's talk about equipping. Um, yeah. How can people really be equipped uh, effectively? You've come up with an amazing resource that you've developed. Tell everyone about it, please, and how they can get a hold of it, because I'm so excited about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look, um, you know, for, for me personally, when I first came into the church, I um, I found that there were, you know, un- so many people that didn't actually know how to share their faith. And that was one of the challenges. I was like, we actually need to teach people what it is to be able to share their faith. Um, a lot of people were stuck in that invitational-based, you know, evangelism, bring them to church, and there's space and grace for that, but it's overcompensated. And I had to literally sit down uh, in, in a season where we were locked down and just be like, okay, God, how can we train and equip your people to, to be able to engage in this space? Because it's one thing to bring an inspirational message on a Sunday to the church or, a, you know, here's your responsibility and, you know, this is what you should be doing. But it's another thing to actually equip them. And what I found is that when I started to search and find um, material that was out there, I just found that there wasn't anything 
that really helped people to to be able to go on the journey of personal responsibility to be able to share Jesus confidently with the people that they knew. So I went after it and uh, I felt like God gave me a bit of a download and um, I wrote some material to um, effectively train the church and actually just to run some live um, training seminars that we were going to do here as a part of the training forum at our team advance, which happens every Wednesday. We would, we would get everyone together and we would teach the group of people that wanted to come in. And then I was like, man, this is going to take a long time to get to the whole church if we're just doing select groups of people. We actually need to, to broaden this out. And so we went to COVID lockdown. And so I started video recording these sessions in my house and started editing my own videos, started pulling all together all these different things. And literally ended up with a product at the end of it that were like, you know what, this is this is a, a tool for the church. And so um, Pastor Corey, um, our global apostolic leader, uh, saw me with the material and saw what we had and just said, look, we need to equip the church with this. And so we, we did a series across the life of the church, which now happens every 12 months. We literally put it into the calendar every year. It's in there and we focus on it for the church for three weeks and they do it through life group and we focus on a different area of it. But but pretty much I set up a system that um, could train people to be able to share the gospel. And uh, I broke that down into what I consider five of the most simplest forums or formats possible that I could think of was, okay, well, to, to share Jesus, you need to know what is his story. Uh, to 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 share Jesus, you also need to be able to know your story. How did you come to know Christ? And so when you mix his story and your story together uh, and, and are able to build that into a, a gospel sharing moment, it, it changes the whole way you approach it. A lot of people knew that Jesus loved them but didn't actually understand the why behind it and they didn't understand how to explain the gospel. So unpack that, and put it into some really simple formats and then went after uh, your story and taught them how to tell their own story. How do you work those two things together? And then I simply looked at it and was like, you know what? They actually need to realize that it's not their responsibility to uh, convince somebody that they should be saved. It is the Holy Spirit's role to convict. Your role is to simply share. What God does with that and where the Holy Spirit takes that is on his end. But what you do is the responsibility of every believer is to share the good news with somebody. So we literally looked from that point of view, okay, well, what is your role? And what is the role of the Holy Spirit? So what is your role personally? What's the responsibility you have? But what is the role of the Holy Spirit? And we unpack those three things in there. Um, and then we looked at the frequently asked questions that people are asking, like, what do I, I don't know what to say, or, or, or I'm fearful of rejection, or we discuss all of these things in the last part of the chapter of that um, to try and alleviate some of those pressures that we put on ourselves when it comes to sharing the good news of the gospel. Well, awesome. So how do people get a hold of uh, this resource? Is it available to the wider body of Christ, I guess, should be the first question I ask. Yeah, look, uh, it's definitely available to the wider body of Christ. We've literally had churches engaging with it right across Australia and in the States already. Um, it, it is available. There's video material. We did it in the studio, recorded the sessions and put it together in a booklet forum so it could be done in a life group. It can be done online, one-on-one, -on -one, um, and it can also be done in the context of a you know an intensive session where you do the sessions back-to-back -back within a one day. Um, the material is available online. You can check out our website both on numa.church slash sharing Jesus confidently and also on my own personal website, shereerice.com, and that will lead you to the links and being able to connect you with some of the team here uh, who can set you up with the resources required. Awesome. Still good. So for those listening to the podcast, the website is numa.church, N-E-U-M-A dot church. And then ShereeRice.com is S-H-A-R-E-E -E or double E, R-I-C-E dot com. Uh, that's correct. Hopefully I got that right. Got it right. <laughs> awesome. Wow. Pastor Cherie, uh, really good stuff and appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for being our guest on the Power 5 podcast. Always good to hear from an evangelist. Really appreciate your heart, your passion, not only to reach the loss, but to equip the body of Christ and also your heart for the things of the spirit. And uh, definitely 
uh, picked up right away when I met you that, you know, you are a seeker of God. You, uh, you love to pray and seek after the Lord. And, and that's so important, as you said, uh, prayer fuels power. And Jesus yeah. really modeled that by his own lifestyle, that he yeah. uh, drew upon the power of the Holy Spirit to do the things that he did to share the gospel of the kingdom, but through that life of intimacy and, and his prayer time with his father. So thank you so much yeah. for being with us. It's been incredible. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today at the Kingdom Community. We trust that you are encouraged as a result of spending time with us. We exist to connect, equip, and send you out into the world to fulfill your destiny and advance the kingdom of God. To learn more about the Kingdom Community, please visit our website, kingdomcommunity.global. Again, our website is kingdomcommunity.global. Together, we are better.